hello all welcome to the channel so today we will see how we can load data into snowflake tables automatically using snowpipe and also we will be leveraging azure services like azure queue services and azure event subscription okay so we will be going through both the uh, technologies snowpipe using snow site and azure using azure portal and see like how we can achieve this step by step okay so to begin with let's go to the snow site okay and try to create a database so let's create a database as a first step and then let's create a schema okay so i have created this schema that is snow land and it is selected by default now so now we don't have to provide the schema okay and then let's create a table so this table we have seen in the previous session it's a customer data that you can get from kaggle website and it has this schema so i have provided all the columns required with the appropriate data types that might be relevant for this example let's create this table and now let's try to just just query and see how it looks okay yeah so it's created now let's create a file format so in file format we have to mention like what with the file format it is going to be csv file with a delimiter as comma and the skip header is one and field optionally enclosed by so this this uh, this property will help us to get rid of any issues that that may come up when a particular field value in a file contains a double quote so we can give this value and get rid of that those issues okay so let's create the file format so this is created now we need to create a notification integration so we have to do create notification integration and we need to give a name and then we need to define and link this back to the azure queue services and notifications okay so before we work on this step we need to do some activity on the azure side let's go back to our azure okay so i think everybody is familiar with this screen now let's go to the queue service go and create a queue service and give some name snow snowflake queue poc okay just i'm giving some name and i will be copying the endpoints put that in a notepad okay so once this is created i will head towards creating a event subscriptions go to event click on event subscription give it a name select event create schema we can make sure uh, we have a topic selected by default otherwise we can give some specific name so i have given the same name as what we have in the resource group name or storage account okay once that is selected we have the option to select what is the event type like on which event this event subscription to be triggered should be triggered like is it like blob creation deletion so i will be selecting the creation okay and then i need to select my endpoints so i need to select storage queue because the storage queue that we want to leverage select this and select the endpoint go and select the storage account and in the endpoint it will pop up the queue service select this click on this and then try to click it if it's already present it will throw an error and if it's not then it will be automatically created now see it's created you can scroll down and check it is created now now our next step would be to go to access control no sorry uh, we can go to shared access signature first okay select container and object remove delete because we are not doing any delete operation and that we are interested of in this example okay and then we will generate a sas token and either you can get the value from blob service sas url or you can get the value from sas token okay so let me just select this sas token go here and paste it yeah that's it and then we need to get one more details that is extra id 
which is Azure Active Directory go there and get this tenant ID paste it here also in this notepad okay now let's switch back to the snow site and now we are going to create a notification integration we have given it a name that is Azure notification integration this is user defined name you can give any name specific and the type is queue and notification provider is Azure storage queue that we have already created and seen and then Azure storage queue primary URI so this thing we need to pass so this will come from the URL path of the Azure queue paste it here and then we need to pass the tenant ID okay let's go and copy the tenant ID and paste it and let's try to create it so this is created if you want to see the integration specific to what we have created just now is this one okay so you can see the other values where it was created whether it is enabled or not okay and the category then we need to do a describe integration and the integration name okay once you do this you will see we have Azure consent URL so this URL will help us to handshake the Azure uh, um, it will help us to handshake the snow site app with the Azure Active Directory tenant so this this just copy this and this will do auto registration by allowing a consent that we need to provide but in this case it's already done so so we don't have to do it so but on your screen it might come differently you just have to accept and give the permission and then we are good and just copy this name which is like Azure multi-tenant app name select this and paste it here copy this yeah so see if I search this it's already present in the enterprise application so this will be added as one entry in the enterprise application in Active Directory okay now our next step would be to go to storage account access control IAM roles do a role assignment click on role assignment search for storage or storage queue data contributor select members select this and select this assignment and it's now assigning okay it is doing a role assignment so that our snow site app that is added as an enterprise application in Azure Active Directory can have appropriate access on the storage account at the queue service level okay so that access role assignment we have done now let's go to our snow site again so now we are going to create a stage okay stage referencing the storage account in the snow site so first of all we need to provide the URL create stage give the stage name and then parameter we need to pass as URL so URL is going to be your storage account you can go to storage account this one click here go to container properties copy this value go back and paste it here and replace this one with Azure okay and SAS token we have already copied copy this and paste it here and create the stage customer so stages stage is created then view the stages if you want so it is created this is a database this is the URL this is a schema so all the details you will find here okay relevant to I'm using account admin but ideally we should not use this like at the development level but to some extent we can use it at the beginning we would require it for integration and all but later you can just use a separate customized rules okay then we have we can see if we have any data in the external stage that we have created let's see using ls at stage customer so you see one file is present here if you want to query that do select dollar one comma two so this one comma two will indicate the specific columns that is available in a file referenced to from the storage account okay and we need to put a at in front of the table name that we are referencing in order to refer our external stage data 
okay so you will see this is created it is pulling out the data so why it is pulling out the data because if I go to my storage account I already have one customer data so the use case would be like a this particular container would be updated either either on a daily basis or on a on a like hourly basis using any application or using like any manual uploads done by any users using Azure Plop storage or other connections available okay so next step the final step would be to create a pipe create pipe give a pipe name okay and then we need to mention the integration integration is something that we have already created here okay the integration which helps uh, snow side to connect to the queue services okay so it will be here and then auto ingest is means yes so it should be like auto ingested as in when a file is dropped in the storage account it should be kicking the pipe and it should proceed with the action that is defined after as okay so you see as copy into this it's simply like the copy command from the stage and the file format is something that we have already defined at the top go here and try to run this so this is created okay so as of now you won't find anything in the customer table okay and we need to trigger this with the help of a upload of a file let's override this and see like if we get some data here or not so not sure if I've created this I think I've already created this okay so let me query this data is querying so data is not populated till now so let me just go back yeah see so we need to give it like a uh, like few seconds so see now the data is uploaded in the customer real table within snowflake database okay so this is how we can automate the loading as in when a file is dropped in the storage account in Azure storage account or s3 bucket in Amazon services automatically the table a landing table or a transient table uh, in a snowflake can be updated okay and then we can also create some sort of like task scheduler that we can see in the coming sessions which will copy the data from this transient table or the landing customer table into the corresponding dim customer table okay uh, so sometimes also like just one more point to add sometimes what happens uh, the pipe is not triggered so we can you can just try to refresh the pipe by using like alter pipe give the pipe name and refresh so in that case the file which is already present in the data lake it will be pulled or it will be triggered and uh, you will be able to see the data so i think that's it for the today's session and uh, guys thanks for your time and see you in the next videos